Good morning, everyone. I'm Drew Rinaldi Subitz, the Land Stewardship Coordinator at the Schuylkill Center for Environmental Education. We are down here off the wonderful, lovely Schuylkill River this morning. We're doing a water quality monitoring project uh, sponsored by the Schuylkill River Greenways uh, in partnership with William Penn Foundation and some other great nature centers, Stroud Water Research, Burke's Nature Center, and Bartram's Garden and Schuylkill Center up and down the Schuylkill River from Reading, Pottstown, and Conchahawk in Philadelphia. So today we are gonna be taking some samples of the water and we'll be testing them in our own lab at the Schuylkill Center, letting them incubate for 24 hours to see what types of E. coli, coliform, bacteria, colonies will grow. And we're also sending a lab to Microbac, which is a professional lab, to compare their results with our home home tested result. The key is to just avoid contamination as much as possible. Everything's sanitized. We have it in this nice little bag here. It's called a whirl pack for a reason. You gotta whirl it, boom, and then you seal it off. And then it's very important that we put it on ice for the time being because warm water creates more growth that we don't want. So I have a cooler pack here with ice and some cooler packs. And that way it'll be good and fresh so we can take it back to the lab for some analysis. So these are our two sensors here. Um, just performing kind of a routine cleaning. Uh, you know, river water, water can obviously have a lot of sediment or algae on it. Um, so what we're gonna do is just take a soft brush. It looks tough, but it's actually a soft brush and just clean off the sensors here. This sensor um, measures conductivity, turbidity, and temperature. So just kind of the flow of the water, how clear is the water, what temperature is it. So we're just gonna give that a nice brush, make sure the sensors are nice and clear. So we just cleaned the turbidity, conductivity, and temperature sensors. Now we're gonna clean the dissolved oxygen sensor. It's a little more sensitive. So we're just gonna not even use a brush. Just gonna clean it off with the bare hands, get the sediment off of there, a little light brushing. Typically we'll probably do this depending every, every couple of weeks or so, depending the sensors online, if they start to not read or the, the numbers jump drastically, then we'll know it's time for another cleaning. And just so you know, we're located down here off of Nixon and River Road, right off the uh, Maniunk Roxboro Canal Trail of the Schuylkill River Trail. The trail's right up above us here. All right, we're good. Okay, so now we are taking the samples from the river and putting them on the, the film. Uh, the film will measure E. coli, coliform, bacteria, colonies. Um, so we're putting um, onto a thousand milliliters onto the form and then we're gonna put it in the incubator to have it incubate at 95 degrees for 24 hours. And then tomorrow we'll come back and be able to see which uh, coliform E. coli colonies have, have grown since then and be able to kind of see what the amount is in, in the water. So then we're also, we did three samples from the river and then we're gonna switch, um, have a new fresh tip uh, pipe for the pipette. And then we're gonna, the fourth one is blank and that's kind of our control. And that's gonna be from pure distilled water that we put in there as well. So now we're just putting them in the incubator. As we said, 95 degrees Fahrenheit for samples. We have a little thermometer in there too, so we can make sure the incubator thermometer is working correctly and I just opened the lid so it dropped a little but it should be back up to 95 in no time and we'll put our E. coli babies to sleep for one 24 hour period Let's see what we find
yeah, well, you could see it that well. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really cool. 1972 Olympus did as well. All right, so uh, it is now the day after, as you can tell. See, I changed my shirt. It must be the next day. <laughs> and 24 hours of incubation at 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius. And we have our slides now to look at. Um, me and my very esteemed lab assistant, Eduardo Duenas, just looked this over. And basically what we're looking for are blue gas bubbles or blue uh, dots, which signify the E. coli. And they have gas bubbles around them. And we were not able to find any blue. This one over here definitely has some a lot of gas around it, but it still is a red dot. And then, of course, the blank one with the distilled water does not have any. So we are running through some options as to why that is. Uh, there's a possibility that um, we didn't take very good samples. We were closer to the bank near some large trees. So one thought is that maybe some of the microbes of the tree roots were doing some work there. Another thought is that, um, well, we're going to try and get further out in the river next time. But also thinking about we are north of the city. So we're above all of where the sewage drains out. We have combined sewer systems in Philadelphia. Um, so we're above that. We're above the Flat Rock Dam, the Fairmont Dam. And really, um, the two runs that flow from the Schuylkill Center, Smith and Meg's Run, are some of the cleanest, um, freshest spring springs that flow into the Schuylkill River that I'm aware of. Um, so possibility is that we have zero E. coli count in this sample. Um, we're going to be doing this sampling after a storm, which will probably almost certainly boost the E. coli count. But um yeah so far one test day with many variables but we're thinking that this spot around this area happens to be hopefully some of the the cleaner water that the Schuylkill has to offer but we'll see what our uh, our our partners up in Reading, Pottstown and down at Bartram's Garden what their results are and then we'll compare so sampling one is complete I want to thank my good man Eduardo Duenas here and um yeah we'll see what's next